Hey, ever found that you struggle with, uh, with confidence? In any way, like confidence to make the ask, to make the sale, to put yourself out there, to say, hey world, look at this thing I got, come pay me money for it, right? No matter what it might be, we struggle with confidence and typically we don't realize it's tied to competence. What is that? We're gonna break it down today. This is your top five ways to build confidence. Now, as we get into this, I want you to think through where you fit, because it's important that you see you in this. I don't want to talk just randomly, see yourself in this. The first thing is you must dedicate time every day to trying something. See, competence means I'm learning, I'm getting competent in this area, and it's a skill set. No matter what you're typically trying, it's a skill set to get better at it. Right, whether it's cooking, or singing, or dancing, or doing videos like this. There's always little nuances within something that you get competent about. The more competent you get, the more skilled you get. The more skilled you get, the better outcome, the more confidence, right? So it's kind of this thing I want you to think about because a lot of us don't try something every day. The fear around not being great at it stops us from getting great at it. And so if you find yourself looking at something, find a way to get past the, the initial fear of, oh, what if this goes wrong? What if I look bad? Guess what? <laughs> You're going to look bad. It's going to go wrong. That's how it works. You're going to bake a couple cakes that are lopsided and, and are burnt before you make a beautiful cake, right? Get okay with dedicating time every single day to doing it and being okay with not comparing yourself to the master chef. But own up. I'm trying to do what it takes to become that master chef. That's what it takes time and putting energy in to get to the point of a black belt, right? Think about karate. You start at a white belt, you build up to a black belt, all by taking time every single day and sometimes weeks over time to get where you need to go. So number two, if we go into this, always be a student. If it's about being competent in the first place, right? Well, learn, be a student. I think there's something that happens when we start getting success and we look at certain areas that we have this area inside that goes, I don't want anyone to know that I'm not great at this. So this makes us fearful to do live streams and put content out to create stuff. Why? Well, because, man, I just, I don't know. I don't know if I can do this. But if I own, like I own, that I'm always a student, I learn from everybody. I learn from my friends, the gardener. I learn from my wife, my kids. I'm learning from everybody something. I love taking walks and watching people do stuff and go, what in the world are they doing? And then I think about why they might do it. So I'm always a student. And in doing that, I get more competent about what's going on around me. That I can talk more to it from a standpoint of value to the world because I'm learning more and I'm seeing more. So be a student, step back and ask the questions. This also means investing in programs that spark your interest. Maybe you may look at someone in the industry and go, you know, I'm hired in that person in your head or I know more than them. Okay, they probably know something you don't that could help you be better. Go learn. It's not a shot at your confidence. You shouldn't feel this pride chip that takes away simply because you want to learn something new. I always I have amazing friends and I'm always learning from them and I always will. So always be a student. Number three, recognize your blind spots. These are what I call identity walls. See, blind spots are these things that are going on in the background that I'm unaware of and what happens, I run into a thing I'm supposed to do and it becomes so difficult to do it, it's like climbing a wall. And what I do typically is I go, uh, I'm going to avoid this. I'm going to procrastinate. I'm going to make a good excuse. I'm going to get unfocused. I'm going to be distracted doing something else when that's on my calendar. So you show up to the moment and it never gets done. So the idea is step back and go, hey, what's going on? Like recognize in that moment something's off because here's what I found to be a truth. If something didn't scare you, it would already be done by now. Now, this simple aspect of what I know is if I focus on this area, I go, there's a blind spot there. I'm fearful of it. What is the reasoning why? And then from there, I can step in and try something new, do something new. If I'm being a student and I'm trying every day, I can get better here. But I got to first see in my blind spot what the main issue is. Now, progressing past this, if all sounds good, here's what you're going to run into. Number four, you got to fix your attitude. It's, it's good and well to, to know some things. But if you get to the point of having a crappy attitude when it comes to approaching new things, trying new things, you're like, it's not going to work out. I don't know, whatever, I'm not good at this. I can't be better. You actually create these weird stories that are negative stories and you live in a way to make those stories right. So if you have a crappy attitude, fix it, right? I, I'm okay admitting I have crappy attitudes in certain areas, but I immediately try and fix them. I notice them and go, that's not a way to look at that. 
that's a weird judgment to have. I shouldn't be rude to that person. I don't even know that person, right? And so if you can step back and, and reframe the way that you're seeing things and fix your attitude, you'll see things with different eyes. When you change the way you look at something, the thing you look at changes, right? So you have to take this perspective and you'll find amazing lessons hidden right within that. Now, number five, embrace the circle. What circle, Anthony? Simple, the competence, confidence circle. See, if you're getting competent at something and you're learning it and trying it every day, you start to take actions that make you feel good, like, oh, I'm doing this, you gain confidence. That confidence sets you up to take the next step to learn something that you might not be great at to get more competence. So you keep the cycle going of competence and confidence. So the more confident I get, the more confident I am, the more confident I am, the more competent I can get by trying new things. Because you can borrow confidence and try it in a new area. Like, I want to do acting. I have no reason to do it, but I got confidence from other stuff in my life, so I'm like, I'm gonna go do it anyways, right? So the idea is the more you can lean on this by trying things, the cycle continues to spin. It's like a wheel spinning uphill, and that is what you want for your life. So, simple, but not simple at the same time, but those are your top five ways to build competence.